Hello, oh my goodness, I am so excited for today's episode. Now, today's episode, we are chatting about why it is important to do the inner work on yourself if you are having issues in your business or in your relationships or in any area of your life, really. Now, if you are not ready to do the inner work, you might listen to this episode or you might hear this introduction and just switch off (laughs) and that's okay. If it is not the right timing for you, then it is not the right timing. But what I would love for you to do is hear me out from what I want to say today because today I'm going to chat about a topic that has been consistently brought up in my private mentoring space recently, consistently brought up. We have gotten into the habit, and I'm going to go deeper into this in a moment, but we have gotten into the habit or the thought process of believing that our life is segmented, that we have our business life and we have our home life and we have our motherhood journey and our friendship journeys and our hobby journeys or whatever we've got, right? And we've gotten into this habit of segmenting them as if they are separate things. Now, I'm going to chat about why they're not. That is what we're going to talk about today, why they are not separate things and how your past traumas, your limiting beliefs that you might have, let's say, around something to do with business, how it's impacting you at home. And how limiting beliefs that you have around yourself and your worth is impacting you in all areas of your life. And if you feel like at the end of this episode that you are ready to do the work, that you have had enough of being on this cycle of maybe self-sabotage and you know that 10 out of 10, you are committed to yourself to dive in and release what is ready to be released and deal with what is ready to be dealt with. And believe me, your subconscious mind and your body knows what that is. Then I would love to hear from you to book a discovery chat with me. It's a 20 minute phone call. It is for people and it's free, but it is for women who are serious about doing the work. I want to talk to you if you are ready to commit to yourself not commit to me. I want to talk to you if you're ready to commit to yourself. And perhaps we can chat about how the different holistic healing modalities that I work with, they work cognitively, energetically, and somatically, how they might help you to actually accelerate in all areas of your life. Because as we're going to talk about today, it is all interconnected. You're listening to Alive and Thriving with Jessica Reed, the podcast that's all about empowering you to achieve optimal wellness and success through self-care, holistic practices, and raw conversations. Jessica and her expert guests are here to share powerful insights and strategies to help you overcome stress and anxiety, take charge of your life, and thrive in life and in business. Grab a cuppa and let's dive in. I want to start this episode by really bringing in some self-compassion. Have you been segmenting different areas of your life? And I'm going to give you some examples of how this might look shortly. Have you been anxious, really anxious, and you attribute that to something that's happening at home or something that you've always dealt with? But then you keep showing up to your business and you feel good while you're showing up to your business, but you can't understand why you keep hitting these glass ceilings, why you're only allowing yourself to get so far. And then you come back home and you go back into this pattern of anxiety. Or have you been struggling at work? Maybe you're stressed and overwhelmed. And then you come home and you think, I shouldn't be like this at home. Home is good. I have some really big breaking news for you. (laughs) You do not magically 
step out of your body and out of your mind and into a new person when you transition from mum to business owner, from business owner to wife, from wife to friend, you don't magically change bodies, change brains. It all comes with you. Now, I know I'm not talking about archetypes. If you have created, and I've encouraged you to create in previous episodes, a business archetype so that when you are stepping into your space, especially if you work from home, (laughs) but if you're stepping into your space, you know, you're stepping into this archetype of this person that you know, this persona that you know that you need to be to achieve what you need to achieve. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that when we have things going on, be it work is impacting us, be it that home is impacting us, be it that past trauma is impacting us, grief is impacting us, stress, burnout, strained relationships, limiting beliefs. When these things are impacting us, they are going to, they are going to show up and manifest themselves in every area of your life in one way or another because until you heal them until you deal with them until you release them until you reprogram the stories in your mind that you have and those beliefs that you have they are coming with you they are coming with you I want you to imagine imagine yourself as say a silhouette and inside that silhouette is all the things All the things, like a big suitcase of stuff. You might like to call it baggage. (laughs) And all those things, everything that is stored in your body, in your mind, your emotions, they are all living within inside of you. And so I know I can speak for myself here and I can actually probably share a real and vulnerable example with you. So just more recently, I had, I had a bad day. <laughs> I had a bad day at the end of April. I had some trauma that day. Um, my capacity to cope with what happened that day was beyond what I could cope with. And I went very much into a fight or flight response, very much anxiety response. Now, I kept going, pretending that that, wasn't happening and I was trying to show up to all the things that I had to do knowing that I was really anxious and now there's nothing wrong with being anxious we have to accept the body for what it is doing and how it is coping and obviously there are strategies we can do but we don't want to fight it but for the first two weeks I thought to myself I can keep working I can still have my busy schedule. I can still record my podcasts. I can still get my trainings ready. I just ran two free trainings. Uh, I can still get all the social media stuff done for that. I can still turn up to my masterminds. I'm in two masterminds and they're brilliant, by the way. Best thing you can do for yourself if you're a woman in business is invest in yourself. Invest in your business. Invest in your learning invest in yourself um and just on a very 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 side note and you're literally hearing this here first in a couple of months I am going to be opening up a very 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 special space for women who want to become an energetic match for what they want to attract and achieve in their business It is not a space for the faint-hearted. It is a space for the very, very self-led and self-connected and self-determined woman who is ready, 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 ready. But that is, you know, that is just a side note. But if you want to know about that, maybe message me on Instagram and I can give you a bit more details. But anyway, back to what I was saying. My point is I was trying to show up for all these things knowing that I had had a personal trauma. 
I was trying to mum life as usual, run to all the appointments, do the school drop-offs, run my business between school time. I was trying to do all of that. And I did not really, and I know, I know that this is what happens, but I didn't really click at first that the anxiety that I was feeling in my body, in my mind that I was operating from because of this trauma that I had had, it was filtering into every part of my life. It wasn't just that when I wasn't doing anything or when I was at home or when I was in my bed and I just, you know, was switching off and not functioning very well for a few weeks. That's a whole nother podcast episode on how I dealt with that. But um, that anxiety followed me around. That anxiety didn't magically switch off because I decided it was time to go to work. And what actually then happened for me was that my body was like, oh, no, pay attention to me. And then I ended up in a four-week vestibular migraine attack that actually had me bedridden for a while with multiple panic attacks a day. But my point is, is that I did not magically shed that anxiety away just because I decided to go to work or because I decided to show up to see a friend or I decided to go out for coffee or whatever the case was. It followed me around because it was in my mind and my body. And I was making the assumption because I went back to that autopilot way of thinking that personal life, personal trauma, personal beliefs wouldn't impact my business. And it did impact my business. I slowed down. I had to pause clients because I did. It's not ethically right for me to hold space for someone if I'm not at my best. I had to pause clients. I had to make choices. I, I could not keep up with the capacity of all the things that I had to do. And I kept trying to push through that. Now, I want to give you an example. Say, for example, you had, you have a belief from your childhood. Perhaps it came from a trauma. Perhaps it came from a story. Perhaps it came from an experience. I don't know. But let's say you have a belief around your worthiness for success. And that belief perhaps you filter into your business. And maybe you're aware of that belief in your business. But what you might not be aware of is that when you filter that belief of worthiness of success, it filters straight back into your personal life too. Define success in your personal life. Perhaps it could be that you are committing to an exercise regime. Perhaps it could be that you are, I don't know, starting a new hobby. That you have a thousand piece puzzle that you need to finish or some artwork that you need to do. Perhaps success in your personal life means having you know, the perfect home with, I don't know, two children and a loving husband. And perhaps you don't have a part of that yet. And so therefore you don't believe you're worthy of success. So do you see how a belief that you had attached to business could actually go and filter into your personal life? I can share another personal story of mine. And that is a belief over, it was more of a self-perception, I guess, around body image and around needing to show up to be, needing to be perfect to show up. And that was something that I carried around in my personal life for a long time. I wouldn't go anywhere without makeup. I had really low self-esteem. I cared what people thought constantly put my body down but here's what I didn't realize I also took that belief that I needed to be perfect that in my personal life manifested in the way that I looked I took that belief that I needed to be perfect and I threw that straight into my business subconsciously 
And here's what it looked like in my business. Here's what it sounded like. It sounded like I can't help other people heal. I can't hold space for other people if my life is not perfect. Now, as I say that out loud, I understand how ridiculous that is because I am human. (laughs) Any other therapist that you talk to is human. And we are all going to have our fair share of human journey issues and emotions and challenges. And here I was believing that I wasn't good enough or capable of helping people, even though I was more than qualified, even though I knew I was good at what I did. And consciously, I kept saying, I want my business to grow. I want to help more people. But how busy do you think I was while I held that belief? I'll tell you what happened. Every single time I started to get multiple inquiries, multiple clients, Every time I started to feel like I was getting towards busy, towards successful, and just so you know, I haven't, busy and successful, I probably shouldn't have put them next to each other because I do not define my business success as being busy. But I mean, in terms of booking clients, every time I felt like I was starting to get busy, my upper limit would kick in. Something would go wrong at home. Something would go wrong for me personally. Maybe anxiety might creep back in. Maybe I'd start, I don't know, fighting with my partner and start feeling overwhelmed by my kids. Had a big personal tragedy last year. Whatever happened, I would then stop and go, oh, my life isn't perfect. What if these people can see right through me? And guess what happened? My business would then no longer be busy. Now, coming to of a, coming into awareness of this belief, reprogramming this belief has been life-changing for me. I truly no longer believe that I need to show up perfectly physically in my life, as in in terms of how I look. That was a big, big thing to work through for me with body image. And I no longer believe that I have to have a perfect life in order to be able to hold space for people to heal because I am very, very, very good at what I do. And as I mentioned before, I understand my limitations and my limitations in terms of if I'm not feeling fantastic and it was very extreme circumstances that I had last month, very, very, very extreme circumstances. So I understand energetically, you know, when I need to pull back. But what has happened since lifting that belief is that I have then been able to cultivate this brilliant business that is just growing by the day. And there's no self-sabotage. There's no unsafety in that. In fact, I can actually lean into and I understand now more too, learning my human design this year, that a part of my purpose in human design is to actually share with the world what I've done that didn't work so that I've got the hiccups (laughs) as I record this, so that they can learn from that. So that my mistakes and my lessons can actually prevent somebody else from having to do those things to begin with. So me having an imperfect life, me experiencing more trauma, me having a relapse of panic attacks because of that trauma, me having issues occasionally in my personal life doesn't make me any less of a alternative therapist but can you see how the belief followed me around and so I really really encourage you to look at your life if it's business that you're focused on and I know so many of you have beautiful businesses which is why I wanted to focus on that today but if it's work 
if you're, you know, not working at the moment, if it's personal life, if it's family life, if it's whatever it is for you, have a look at what outcomes you are getting. Have a look at what is manifesting in those areas and then start to have a look at how whatever you are going through or have been through or have suppressed and that's a big one. Let's say, for example, you had suppressed a childhood trauma. If you had suppressed something, you had pushed it down and thought, no, that's not relevant. But let's say, for example, that that trauma actually taught you a belief that it is not safe for you to be seen. And then you got to show up for your business. And you wonder why you have an anxiety attack over doing an Instagram live. Or you have this story that everyone's going to judge you. Or perhaps you are, you have this belief that you're an inconvenience. Because that's what you grew up to believe. And so tell me how many emails do you send out a week to your email list if you believe you're an inconvenience. You can see how these beliefs, these stories, these traumas, they manifest themselves in different ways in different areas of your life. And so I would really encourage you to start to look at your issues, start to look at you know, where it is in your life that you are holding yourself back where your problems are, where your glass ceiling is and start to get curious about what it is that's going on for you personally. Because again, and I'm going to say it again, your mind, your body, it goes with you everywhere. It goes with you everywhere. Can't say it enough. Your mind and your body goes with you everywhere. If you are burning yourself out at work, it is going to impact home. If you're burning yourself out at home, it is going to impact work. Your mind, your body, your energy, it comes with you everywhere. We don't magically change bodies for our different roles in our life. We don't magically change brains So I invited you at the beginning of this podcast episode to delve into what work do I need to do? What inner work do I need to do? What do I need to address within myself that is going to cause a positive flow on effect in all areas of my life? And I hope that me sharing these vulnerable stories of mine can help you to feel like whatever it is that you are going through, that you are human. (laughs) What you're experiencing is normal and it's okay. But there is another end, there is another side to it. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And I want you to take back control and know that the more inner work that you do, the greater your outcomes in all areas of your life. And if you feel like I might be somebody who can help you with that inner work, I would love to chat. I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I want to talk to you if you are ready, if you know you're ready, if you are 10 out of 10, done with the way you've been feeling and done with the limitations, done with not being a match for what you want to achieve, you know there's things holding you back, even if you don't know what they are, You don't need to know what they are. We'll figure that out. And if you are 10 out of 10 committed to yourself, to getting that done, to exploring, to getting curious and to healing and to elevating, then I want to hear from you. Now, I hope you have the most magical week and I cannot wait to connect with you on next week's episode of Alive and Thriving. 
Wow, what a journey it's been today. We are so grateful for each and every one of you who tuned in to Alive and Thriving. If you enjoyed this episode and want to help us keep growing, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite platform. It's a simple but powerful way to support a small business like ours to continue to make an impact.